pay, pay homage, yeah. Respect. One, two, and acknowledge the rap. Uh. I don't know what you cast was thinking. Yo, what's up, y'all? This is Master Ace, Brooklyn, New York. And this is coming to you by word of mouth. Real hip hop. I want to kind of let y'all know that my mother, Yvonne, who passed away in 2005, she had me at a young age. And somehow, someway, she was able to raise me in the mean streets of Brooklyn all by herself. And I'm happy to say that I stand before y'all tonight as the son of Yvonne. Yeah. Uh. What's going on, y'all? This is Master Ace, Brooklyn, New York City. Been in the game since 88. Juice Crew, A&E Crew, INC Crew, EMC Crew. Still going. To be honest with you, all the Juice Crew, BDP kind of conflict happened before I got down. Like um, when when the Bridges Over was out and South Bronx and those records, I hadn't even met Molly Mar yet. I was going to the clubs, I was going to Latin Quarters, was like the club I used to go to all the time. And we would go to those clubs and hear those records and be dancing and wilding out to those records. Matter of fact, um, I saw KRS-One perform at Latin Quarters do South Bronx. That was his only single he had out. He came and did South Bronx, tore it down. Um, and I hadn't even met Molly Mall yet. Like it was a couple years later. I was 86. I'll be honest with you, um, I just finished up the Doom record like um, maybe six months ago and when I'm working on a project, I don't listen to other people's stuff, it just kind of clouds my brain a little bit. It's usually after I finish the project that I play catch up. So right now I'm just playing catch up, trying to catch like the, the new Sean Price came out, the new Torrey came out. Um, I'm still waiting on that J Electronica, but um, I'm playing catch up right now on all of the all of the new music because I really shut down my ears to other outside influences when I'm working on a, a record. I think the thing I dislike the most about the industry now is really just where the radio is with it. Um, I wish that because in the what we call the golden age in the '90s, you had a variety of types of hip hop being played on the radio. You know, you had Mob Deep, you had Wu-Tang Clan, you had harder stuff, but then you also had more commercial kind of radio friendly stuff being played too. And But it was a good balance, you know what I mean? And um, I kind of miss that balance on the radio. I wish that there was a way to have some of the, some of the you know, more kind of underground, harder boom bap stuff mixed in with the radio friendly kind of you know Trey song rap we, we rap you know rap with Trey songs on the hook kind of records. There's nothing wrong with those records, but I just feel like there's too much of one thing on the radio. We need to need to um, have a little more variety. I mean, I, I don't, I don't take a hard stance on on anybody's fashion decisions or you know statements, you know, cause cause that's what it is, it's fashion. Like I do some weird stuff on stage that I'm sure dudes don't understand me cutting the sock and putting it on my arm. Like I do weird stuff too, so. You know, the I, I didn't actually see the, the the picture with the skirt or the dress or whatever he was wearing, but you know, um, there's definitely some crazy fashion forward things going on, and hip hop is starting to um, blend with other cultures, other styles, other you know, more pop cultures starting to kind of infiltrate hip hop. So it's not just straight raw, you know, hip hop gear and Jordans. It, it, 
it's 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 definitely venturing into other areas as far as fashion is concerned and you know the one thing I do know about Kanye regardless of what he's wearing I know he's a talented MC and a talented producer and I kind of look past some of the zaniness that he does and I focus on the music and he, he definitely is a, a an incredible music maker as far as my advice to young cats um because i've had a a couple of uh i guess you know close family members whose sons want to rap now and they know that i'm in the industry so they come to me asking me you know can i help them out and put them on or give them that first shot and basically what i told them was the game is not how it was you're not gonna just make a demo, shop it, get a deal, put a record out. Um, what you need to do is first hone your craft, make sure you're talented and, and, and know what you're doing lyrically and musically. But we're in um, an era now where you just record your stuff with an iPhone, rap it, record it, put it on YouTube, and, and build a fan base that way. If you're talented and you're good and you're putting your stuff out there for people to see, you're going to see your views and your likes start to go up and go up and go up and eventually you'll get the attention of not only fans but maybe record labels or maybe production companies. But the days of making a demo in the studio and spending a bunch of money just is over with. You know, so I told the kid just, you know, because he, he basically makes his records in his house on his laptop. I said, keep doing that. And record record videos to everything. Make them interesting. Record videos to your verses or to whatever you're doing, and put them on SoundCloud. Put them on YouTube. And let's see. That's how you get feedback and find out immediate feedback. That's one thing that we didn't have when when we were coming up in the '90s. We didn't get that immediate feedback that the internet and that the digital uh, age gives us. We put music out, and people might not be feeling it, but we don't really really know. Because there was no blogs, there was no, uh, there was no immediate input. But now you got Instagram, you got Twitter, you got, you know, blog sites. You put something out that day, you're gonna see people commenting on it, and they're gonna let you know if they're feeling it, if they're not feeling it, and that may help you be able to guide what you're gonna do with your next record. Jay Electronica is definitely a dude that I that I that I gravitate to. I think um, I think he's like that next dude, um, just in terms of what he does lyrically. There's some cool dudes that are okay. You know, Big Sean is cool. He's okay. Um, Kendrick Lamar is cool. He's okay. Um, but I think Jay Elect is taking that next step of lyricism and making dudes think a little bit, and he goes a little bit deeper than most cats. Uh, and so, you know, I'm, I'm, he's like an MC's MC for me. Um, so I would say Jay. Yo, what's going on, y'all? This is Master Ace, Brooklyn, New York City. And if you want that real hip hop, you know what it is. Check out Capacity Entertainment, bringing you the best in real hip hop to Canada. Pay homage, respect. Must have been crazy. Now step up on stage at CMJ. Mention my name. I hear these cats, but I ain't listening. A little faint dissing, a little scratch, a little paint missing. But I still gleam and glisten, hot like a stream of pissing. I'm about to have your whole team wishing that you never got this shit started. You about to be dearly departed. You gotta be nearly retarded to let me hear my name mentioned. Trying to gain attention, now I'm running through this game lynching. And I heard a few cats trying to take shots on the low. These XFL rappers trying to fuck with a real pro. One thing, who named y'all the high and the mighty? To me, y'all just sound like a couple of high whiteys. You had to be on mad coke and ecstasy to think for a second.